Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're taking a look at the new releases from Slipknot, Scar Symmetry, and Godflesh. But you heard me right. Slipknot dropped something today. It's not an album. Their, their last album was last year called The End So Far. This is an EP called Adderall. Adderall is the first track from the recent album from last year. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of people dumping on this EP and I understand why. Now, information about this EP actually leaked, I wanna say like a month ago or so. Mm -hmm. Some people were in the know, some people weren't. And when I saw the information that, oh, they're dropping an EP, oh, it's based on Adderall, okay, like what's going on, what, huh? I went and I saw the track listing and I thought, you know, I don't want to go into this with any expectations. I feel like a lot of people may have went into this thinking they're going to get a brand new Slipknot experience. But that's not what this is by any means. This is, to me, bonus material you would get on like a deluxe edition of an album. Just like extra bonus stuff, just like, hey, here's some extra stuff. So you got like Death March, which is the first track, which is just the intro sound effects to Adderall. Weirdly enough, it's followed by a non-intro version of Adderall, so you're essentially yeah. just listening to Adderall, which, by the way, I like that song a lot. Just just thought I'd say it. I think it's a really good song. It was already, already released on an album, though. Already but. released on an album, <laughs> but I think it's a good song. Um, and I, that also includes a rough demo of the song, which I think is really cool, because then you get a look into, like, okay, what did this song sound like before it was finished? How different was it? How complete was it? Like what you know and they had the vocals pretty much finished and they had the changes going on in the background but that was kind of it they didn't have any percussion they didn't have too much of it put together so I think it's a cool little look into like okay well how was the song being put together and then there's a track called Redder Redder why is this here I want someone in the comments please to give me a legitimate potential explanation for why this track is there. Maybe it's some sound effect that happens within Adderall that I don't recognize. Maybe, that's my but... guess, considering that's what Death March is. <laughs> but I want to know, it's 25 seconds of just a sound effect. That's it. Yeah. It's pointless. And then you get Hard to Be Here, which is pretty much the instrumentals of the Adderall demo, which is a cool soundscape, but it's just like, whatever. But it's like, this EP, I did not go with any. I did not go in with any expectation to be like wowed or anything. I just went in like, okay, I'm just gonna throw this on. It is what it's gonna be. I'm not expecting anything magical, and I'm like, oh, it's fine. It's whatever. Like, I don't. I don't think anyone should really be taking this EP seriously at all. But I mean, if you like the song Adderall, then you'll probably like what's on here. I guess. It to me, it's a pointless release. Uh, completely just setting the fan base up for disappointment. A lot of people are really angry about it. I understand why. It's it's this was totally a bum move from Slipknot to release this. This really they could new. have at least put a new song on it that would have maybe made it worth listening to. Maybe instead of releasing Bone Church when they did, they could have put it on this. Perhaps I don't even know if that would have saved it. But even tacking this onto the end of a CD as like a deluxe edition. I think that would even be, that, that's not even good in my opinion. There should have been at least a track or two, especially after the band was teasing, you know, what if we don't release albums? What if we release just tracks from time to time? That's right? true. Like, they really, they like... teased that and I'm thinking, okay, here's a new EP. There's going to be at least a one or two cool new songs on it. It was trash. This is a complete disappointment. They, they were kind of like building up to it a little bit, which I think yeah. if this is the content of the EP, you shouldn't build up to this yeah. at all. Because then you're setting people up for disappointment because there's not much content there at all. So it's so, like, just drop it without any hype or anything. I think there was a video too. Like just, I don't think there's a point trying to hype people up for something like this because there's really no content there. No content. But that's why I wasn't as upset with it because I went in expecting no content. Yeah, because I'm like, well, this is just like crazy. This is extras from Adderall, so I'm not expecting content. I got it. I'm like, well, that's what I, I expected, like when so it, I'm not disappointed. I feel like when a band drops something, uh, you should expect something of quality there, especially a band like Slipknot. Look at a band like Ghost, who released Pope Star after Meliora, and they had Square Hammer on that, that's which true. is their biggest hit by far. That's just an example of 
a band that released a follow-up EP that was later tacked onto Meliora as deluxe edition content, mm -hmm. and it has one of their best songs on there. That's a good point. That's just an example. So Slipknot ma majorly dropped the ball here. I'm vastly disappointed, but it is what it is. You can't be disappointed if you didn't have any expectations. As soon as Slipknot drops something, I automatically have expectations. Just how it is. Wait, wait, Lifelong they, Slipknot fan. Cool. I'm expecting to hear or, or 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 hear something that I'm that I'm gonna like, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I don't like every single thing Slipknot does, but every album they have has stuff on it that I love, right? So this is the first time they've released something that I've gone, this entire thing is shit. I don't care about any of this. Adderall, I think, is a great song too, but I already have that. True. I've already had that. We've already reviewed that. We've already been over that. I don't need that again. I don't need it without the intro, and I don't need. I don't care what it sounded like before it was finished. I just don't give a shit. So, huge fail. Godflesh Purge. Godflesh Purge. Now, Godflesh is a band that I've heard the name of. I'm like, oh yeah, I've heard of Godflesh, but I don't know anything about them. I don't know what they sound like. I don't know what genre they are. I don't know. So, putting this on, I really did not know what to expect. Um... But what I got was like 90s industrial metal, and I probably wouldn't have guessed that. So, um, I, and overall, I felt really split on this album. I felt like half of it had some pretty cool grooves, some pretty cool sounds. It was, you know, I, I was enjoying it. The other half felt like just the most boring thing. It would just drag, and I'd think, why is this song seven minutes long? There's nothing happening here. There's, the groove's not even interesting. So, you know, a song like uh, Landlord, I like the riff in that song. That's pretty neat. And I'm thinking, like, this is kind of reminding me of something like Rob Zombie or something. Like, kind of that era stuff. But then you look at a song like Lazarus Leper, it goes absolutely nowhere. I feel like it's like walking into a wall and still walking just right in front of a wall like you're not going anywhere you're not doing anything nothing is happening here you're just repeating useless motion it's like sinking in quicksand but right before it gets to here you just pops out again and then it just keeps going it feels like this motion <laughs> over and over again in quicksand like you can't do anything about it it's just a never-ending torture you're enduring it's what it feels like i have notes about like long drawn out droning and the guy singing sounds like he's just complaining about lack of sex like i don't know so, I don't know, I, I I put this on, I was in the same boat, I didn't really know what to expect. So it starts playing, and I'm thinking, okay, this sounds like Industrial Primus. Like, that's kind of my, well, my first vibe, and I thought, that's actually a pretty cool kind of uh, description of, of the band. But as it's going, I'm getting bored of it pretty fast, because the songs are drawn out, they're droned out, they're, um, they feel way too long for what they are. There's not a lot of singing in it, so the instrumentation also feels like it lasts longer than it really does, probably. Um, it reminded me a bit of like, I used to go to raves when I was younger and it reminded me a bit about that time of my life because you'd be in the club and everybody would be kind of like tripping out and then a song like that would like, like Landlord for example would come on and then the whole club would just be vibing like because everybody's <laughs> tripping on some, some crazy stuff or whatever. Um, that's kind of the vibe I got from this. So my overall take of this album on a first impressions is that this is probably good for people who trip out and people who are stoned people who you know do drugs and like to listen to music and party when they're you know high because I feel like this is music that that will vibrate and reverberate through your body and that feels really good when you're on ecstasy or or MDMA or something like that so uh, that's my biggest positive takeaway from this album but honestly full disclosure I couldn't even make make it through the album Wow. I got to baby track six and I was like, okay, I'm done. Like, I just, <laughs> I don't want to listen to this anymore. And I've mentioned this before on the channel, but every time I listen to an album on the first release, I give it a score. My, like, my score is based on what are the chances I want to listen to this album again, right? It's not really a score of how good I thought it was. It's like, how much do I really want to look at, listen to this again? And this is one of the few albums that's actually gotten a zero. Like, I have no desire to listen to this again. I think... For people that like industrial metal and people that like that kind of, you know, stuff that might play in a rave or something like that, this might be for you, right? It's not for me. It's not for TV Fish. This is not the kind of stuff we're really into, unfortunately. Uh, but we give everything a chance. So um, for us, uh, Godflesh Purge was a flop. So the singularity, phase two, Xenotaph by Scar Symmetry, their first album in nine years. Now I 
Big Scar Symmetry fan. I guess you kind of became a fan after we reviewed Holographic Universe way back and it got two toe tags because that album is a masterpiece. This one, we, we checked out two of the singles. We checked out Chrono Nautilus and we checked out Scorched Quadrant. And Chrono Nautilus is actually the opening track. I like the song a lot. Like listening to it again, I'm thinking, yeah, this is giving me the vibes from this band that I like. Mm -hmm. The brutal riffs, the cool melodies, like this is good stuff. But then Scorch Quadrant follows it. And I liked Scorch Quadrant when I first heard it, which was the first single they released. Mm -hmm. But hearing it now, I just really didn't care. And it was weird. It kind of felt like it's just Chrono Nautilus did everything that song does, but just better. And I feel like with the way that song sounds and the melody, I'm like, why? Like, you know, if this is telling a big story, I feel like this song should be closer to the end of the album, as opposed to track number two. And then Overlord, right after that, makes more sense pacing-wise to follow Chrono Nautilus. So, what's going on there? I just found that to be a little bit weird. Well, for Scorch Squadron, I had kind of the opposite effect. I feel like when we when we reacted to the video, I was kind of like mad about it, but I feel like listening to it again after the fact and not having the video to distract me, I feel like I liked it a little bit more. So not a lot more. I feel like it's still probably one of the weaker songs on the album, mm -hmm. but it's just weird that we both had a kind of an opposite take on that song for the same reason. Yeah. Now, I was finding myself thinking, you know, some of these songs, they kind of have a similar form, and that was bugging me a little bit. A lot of them would have like kind of a similar melodic timing. They would do, you know, key change when you would expect it, and I felt like they weren't really taking me on an adventure and that's what I love from this band is like a big musical adventure crazy stuff going on longer songs brutal riffs and I did get that in some songs uh, one as an example is Altergeist I, I enjoy the groove the focus on the harsh vocals and the second half is exactly what I love from this band it, it strays from the path and it goes somewhere else that's really really cool um, the outro to Reich's Fall also really cool. Gnarly. Nice riff. They go from, they have a syncopated riff, and you got the kick is following that, and then the kick just starts a double pedal mm -hmm. going, um, just straight through. And that's really, really cool. And then they do this kind of like offbeat thing near the, like right at the very end. Also really cool, and wasn't expecting that either. Mm -hmm. Love the little surprise there. Um, now the verses in Digifrenia Dawn, super duper sick. And I feel like riffs like that are what make this band their peak. Like, just like, oh yeah, that's fucking sick. Super duper brutal. And I guess the last uh, song that I really, really enjoyed was A Voyage with Tailed Meteors. Um, the groove that they kind of start at the two minute mark, super duper rad. And just the whole song just kind of felt like what I really love from this band. So I feel like those songs really stood out just on a first listen. But I'd have to really hear it more to see if, you know, as a... The album kind of has the whole scope that I kind of want it to have. Mm -hmm. And for reference, I did listen to Phase 1, Neo Humanity, uh, as well, just as a reference point. I haven't heard that album in a while. And I enjoyed it. It kind of felt like it was more consistent. I feel like with this album, it was like some songs were like okay, and then some songs were great. But um, Phase 1 was like consistently pretty good. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious as to um, how this album could change listening to it in the future. I feel like on a first impressions, this album kind of has me in the middle. Uh, I feel like it's got a lot of good guitar work on it. The vocals are good. Um, Reich, Reich's Fall, track number five, I think for, for me so far is the best song on the album. You mentioned the outro, and I have a specific note about the outro being awesome, because it is. Uh, the song also has some really cool vocal stuff going on. It's either some harmonizing or layering or maybe a backup vocalist, but there's just some really cool stuff going on. And um, to me, it's just the best song so far. Track number seven, Hyperborean Flames. I thought this was also a great song. Um, when it started, I thought it was going to be an instrumental just because of the way it was presented. And the vocals don't kick in until like after a minute in. Uh, I think it would be awesome as an instrumental, to be honest, because it would have been pretty epic. Mm -hmm. And it would have been a nice, like, in the middle of the album, kind of like... Um, yeah, break just, or like a little mix-up Just there. something just really cool in the middle, in the middle of the album. I thought it would be awesome. But there is singing on it, which doesn't really ruin it, it just kind of like, it, yeah, whatever. Um, A Voyage with Tailed Meteors is another song that I like, did you mention that as well? To me, this song almost sounded, it had a bit of a power metal vibe to it. The way that the the double bass and the riffs complemented each other, mm -hmm. it reminded me of like power metal style um, instrumentation. Um, other than that, like, you know, some pretty cool solos here and there. 
But I'm with Teeny Fish in the sense that like a lot of the songs kind of just just did not much. But again, first impressions. So it's it's hard to really give a full and comprehensive thought on it when we didn't really sit down and analyze it that much. Because I feel like there's a lot going on here. I feel mm. like they're a, a pretty complex band. They are. Um, there's a lot of ideas happening. Um, and those ideas are spread across all instruments. So you got a lot of cool drum stuff going on. You mentioned single bass stuff. I mentioned vocal stuff. And the guitars are wild and all over the place with riffs, solos, crazy stuff. So there's a lot happening. It's hard to pick up on it all on a first listen. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. And we're, we've decided to review this album. So next week we are going to check out the Singularity Phase 2 Xenotap and give it a final full review after listening to it for an entire week. And that's all we got for you guys today. Remember to like the video if you liked it. Comment, tell us in the comments below what do you think of today's releases. And subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm TV Fish. I'm Bile Self. We'll see you guys later.